If you want cool looking paper effects in your music videos, keep on watching. So in my last paper animation video, you guys flamed me in the comments saying that you should do it in Photoshop instead of printing out in paper. Well, let me speak my case real quick. All of these videos were done with real paper. The only person I know that does it in Photoshop, the paper effect is Blind Cat Vision. And realistically, I think it's way easier to do it with paper and scanning. It takes, it goes way faster and it kind of looks better. Now I'm not hating on Blind Cat Vision, like his paper effects do look nice. I'm just saying it's way faster and looks better to do it in paper. That being said, I do know how to do it in Photoshop. I'm not the best in Photoshop, proficient to okay at it. So if you guys find a different way to do it, or if you guys know a faster way to do it from what I'm doing, then let me know in the comments. However, this is the fastest way and the best way I found to do it in Photoshop. So just keep on watching and here we go. Okay, before we start to do this effect and make it look nice, you're gonna need two things from Brush Easy. You're gonna need this Arter, Artist Paper Texture Patterns too. And then you're also gonna need this Torn Paper Brushes. Just go ahead and download those and then in the tutorial I'll show you how to install them in your Photoshop. So in Premiere Pro, I have this music video here and I don't wanna play any of the song. So I just have a hard cut from here to here and I'm gonna do a paper transition from here to here, obviously. So to do that, I need to select the first frame of the second clip, which is this one, and I need to take a snapshot. So underneath here, where it says, where this, it has this little camera, just click that, export frame. You can just save it anywhere, but make sure import into project is selected. Click OK. And then go back to your project, and then it should be the latest one that was into your project. Just go ahead and drag that on. Now, this doesn't really matter. It's not going to be the same video we're going to have. We just need to drag it on and right click it and then click edit in Adobe Photoshop. Now, Photoshop should open and it should have, it should look like this. If it doesn't, just make sure you click window, workspaces, and click 3D. Now, first thing you want to do is create a video timeline. Go ahead and create that. And then right here on the right, there's going to be four bars. Click that and on set click on set timeline frame rate and change that to 24. So it should match your video. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to cut him out. I have the newest version of Photoshop, so I'm gonna click on quick actions right here. I'm gonna click select subject. If you don't have the newest version of Photoshop, you can do it manually with the quick brush tool and I'll show you what that is right now. So after clicking select subject, it did an okay job, but it selected a lot more people than I wanted. All I need to do is go to the left right here and on this quick selection tool, if I didn't want uh, these selected, I'm gonna hold Alt on my keyboard, just like this, and then I'm gonna drag it over the parts I don't want selected. And then I'm gonna stop holding Alt and then drag on the parts I do want selected if it didn't select everything. Everything, sorry. Now what I wanna do is with the selection made, I'm going to press Control C and Control V that'll copy and paste it and I'm gonna uncheck the bottom layer and I should have just my selection ready now here's where it gets complicated if I do something that that can be done faster let me know in the comments but this is the fastest and best looking way I found to do it in Photoshop so just keep following along so with a 24 frame per second timeline that means there's 24 frames in a whole second of the video and I like to make my animations three frames at a time using the 24 frame per second timeline, if that makes sense. I'm gonna go to 15 frames forward. And on the 16th frame, I'm just gonna go one frame back. And then I'm gonna get, make sure the top layer selected, layer one, which is our layer with nothing behind it, and click on the scissor tool, and that will cut it. Now I'll just select on the second layer copy and just delete that, and go ahead and bring your little video playback end loop and then just drag it to the end. Now the way the reason I did this is because we're gonna need to work backwards. It just it'll be the easiest way. Um, and you'll kind of get what I'm saying when I'm going along. So the first one the first frame is okay. We're gonna go three frames to the left, one, two, three. And we're gonna click the little scissor button and that'll make our end frame. Now our end frame he's gonna look like this, so that's fine. Now we just need to go three frames back after this one. Let me do this. Let's go one, two, three, and then make sure this layer is selected, and then click the scissor button. 
and now we can start doing our paper effects so i want him to unfold in unfold into like himself so i'm gonna go to the left right here and click on this little lasso tool i like to use a polygonal lasso tool but you can use the other one and i'm just gonna click and cut off his face halfway just like that now i'm going to with these with the same layer selected i'm going to right click Make sure these you still have a selection and click on free transform. Now I'm just going to drag this down to about the same size. You can also hold shift and control. And I'm going to move it into place like this. I'm going to press enter and then now I should still have my selection selected. You can tell by this dotted lines around my selection. I'm going to press control C and control V. Now the reason I did this is so we can have a more we can have more options to edit this part out so once you did that it will make a second layer you can see right here which is super ugly and you're gonna your timeline is gonna get super messy what I like to do is I like to just cut this layer to the length of this second frame and I'm going to delete the excess now I should have two frames on top of each other and then one frame at the end that's just fine I'm gonna select this top frame right here and it should select right here I'm going to double click the layer now I'm going to click on pattern overlay now I was doing this already you can already see there's a paper texture in my pattern overlay you're not gonna have this just go ahead on the pattern go ahead and click this and click on this little settings tab and then click on import patterns and then import this uh, import the patterns I had you download in the beginning that being said, I have these different patterns. I like to use, uh, let me see if I can find it again. I like to use crumpled paper white. And if you don't like it, you can scale it up or scale it down to however you like it. And then change the angle each time. Now let's say you want a, oh, first things first, sorry. Make sure you have drop shadow selected. That's gonna sell your effect a lot. Just like that. And then you can mess with these distance and the spread and the size just to get it the way you like it and even the opacity here we go so now if you look at the animation we have now we have this to this so it's kind of unfolding into you know the transition so the next thing we need to do is we need to go to the left three times again so one two three and I'm going to drag now this layer to the left and I'm going to unselect this bottom layer. So now if you look at it, we have this layer to this, this layer to the more paper layer to the animation or to the transition. Now I'm going to select the bottom layer again and then press the scissors button. It will cut the layers. And now the reason we did this is because this is kind of our starting point for the second fold. So we can't just have, you know, this fold in a second time if we have this fold, it'll, it'll look more realistic and flow more, if that makes sense. So that being said, is we're going to need to select this layer now. Go back to the polygonal lasso tool. And now I'm going to select around him. I'm going to right click while having the selection. Click free transform. And I'm just going to hold shift this time. And move this down like this. However, I need to make it fit right about here. Okay, I'm gonna press enter and now still having my selection. You can see, you can tell by the dotted lines. I'm gonna press control C, control V again. It'll make another layer. Make sure you move that layer to the left and align it with the layer you want on top of it. Press, the, uh, select the layer, press the scissors tool, delete the excess. And now what we need to do again is we need to go over to the right here, double click it, add the pattern overlay. I'm going to use the same pattern and then add the drop shadow. I'm going to use the same drop shadow and that is fine right here. This pattern overlay and your feather on your mask kind of already creates a ripped paper effect, but let's say you want more of a ripped paper effect. Well, we're going to go over to our eraser tool right here and then on the top where our brushes are, you're going to need to install the torn paper brushes that took to the download and the way we do that is we click this little cog and then 
we click on import brushes and then you find the brushes um, I told you to download. Now once you do that you'll have these torn paper brushes and you can select different ones you can, like this one. Um, it's kind of big but that's fine right now so I'm going to move my little brush right here and just click once and it'll cut the paper into a ripped paper effect. Make sure your top layer is selected which is just this part of the paper make sure that's selected and then click your eraser tool and then you can animate or change your paper texture just like that so if I do that and then just keep animating it and changing it the way I'm changing the brush direction is by opening the paper tab and then moving this around so if you move it like this I can add a rip like that so now if we look at our animation in total not including this we should have a fold, a fold like this. So it's coming together. Now we need to do this two more times. So I'm going to go to the left three times. I'm going to use the keyframe buttons now. So one, two, three. I'm going to drag now the bottom layer to the left. So we have this. Extend it to the left three times. And hopefully by now you guys get the whole gist, or gist of it. It just takes, it's pretty time consuming and this is why I like the real paper effect. So polygonal, make sure this is selected, polygonal lasso tool, control C, control O, polygonal lasso tool, free transform, I'm gonna hold shift, like that, put it right there, enter, control C, oh, control C, control V, change it cut the excess off and then now do it again pattern overlay drop shadow click OK so now our animation looks like this and now what also sells the effect is this is pretty much the whole animation what sells the effect however is we need to add a paper texture to his um, regular non paper effecty parts right so like this part and like this part in whole. So what I like to do is I like to go to Google and look up folded paper texture. So if we, I'm going to copy it and then paste it. So if I just paste it, it'll automatically paste it in Photoshop and I'll show you my process on doing this. Like I said, again, it's time consuming. So I'm going to drag this all the way up to my layers right here. I'm gonna to go to the end of the animation, which is right here. I'm going to press Control T with my paper layer selected and then just drag this up and to resize it, make sure it's got everything. I'm going to press Enter. Now with my paper layer selected, I'm going to go right here where it says Normal and I'm going to change it to about probably Linear Burn. That looks nice. And I don't need it behind him. I need, it, I need him to look like paper, so I'm going to right click the paper overlay and then create a clipping mask and then now he should just look like paper. Now the way I do this is we need to complete this for the whole animation. I'm going to make sure my paper layer is selected. Press Control C, Control V and I'm going to drag it down to down so you can see it's in the middle sandwiched in between these two and then I'm going to right click it again here. I need to select this layer. I need to right click it create a clipping mask again so now if we look at it and I move it around here let me move this around he should have the paper texture and I like to just move it around so it looks like a folded paper like this there we go and then now I need to do it again for this one so control C control V move this down to right click create a clipping mask and then make sure this is selected and then just move this around make sure that you have your move tool just like that then one more time control C control V move it down to create a clipping mask make sure this layer is selected and move it just around here and now if you look at it we'll have this animation paper style animation with folds and now sometimes if you want let's say I really don't like this because I can see this top part I can just select the top layer of this little sandwich and just move it like that that's fine 
and sometimes if you mess up right here you can just uh, I'm just gonna do some edits here, let me have this t top sandwich selected I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger okay there we go so just like that we have a paper unfolding effect it took much longer than printing out the paper um, but that's what it is and that's how you do it in Photoshop however we still need to export this animation so with your timeline selected, I like to have my little loop playback into out points. You can see them right here. Just make sure you have your whole animation selected, nothing more, nothing less. And now I'm going to go up to File, Render Video, actually Export, Render Video. And now you need the settings. This is the most important part. On animation quality, you can keep it like that keep it 1920 that's the size of my video Adobe media encoder that's fine or you can do a Photoshop media sequence but right here where it says render options you need to click straight unmatted that's gonna get no background for your animation that's what you want so make sure you click straight unmatted and then just click render okay and then the video is rendered so now we're back into Premiere Pro and then once you found your animation you made you're just going to drag it to right before your your transition and if you look at it now we'll have a paper unfolding paper effect from Photoshop or from Premiere Pro into Photoshop now that being said it to really sell the paper effect you're gonna need to do a lot more and you're gonna need to have a background layer but that's how you do it in Photoshop Unpa unfold the paper effect since you guys are asking for it thanks for watching like and subscribe later